in this session, in this OS 9 session on my Logic slash Pro Tools rig, um, I started to edit those kitchen sounds and try to make an interesting beat. Um, and so what's interesting with this one, so this is just a little part of that, you know, from that kit that I programmed. But the instead of doing a side chain or anything, because I wanted it to pump where I didn't have kick drum and I wanted really um, tight control over it, so I just used the, the fading here, like the fades. And if you look at the automation, there's some automation on it too to bring out that you know, rhythm to it. Because um, that's kind of like what it works with the rest of it. Um, and this part here, this is <laughs> that like kick drum is like banging on a stairwell, and the snare drum is the uh, like a washer dryer closing the door on it. Um, yeah, question? Is there any processing on the sound from the last file to this file? Um, no, it's just that like these are. Uh, you know, I, I have this edited tighter. I may have like brought up the levels or, or balanced the levels, you know, because um, usually in my previous workflow to, to like when I was working on this stuff, the OS 9 was like, and, and the Pro Tools slash Logic system was for just tidying things up, editing. Because doing MIDI and OS 9, if anyone remembers ever doing that with OMS, it's a nightmare. And, uh, um, and so yeah, it was just sort of, that was like my editing machine. Um, and sound design machine, and then, you know, the I had my G5 was like the writing machine, but that whole workflow is was a little inefficient. Um, so, and then what's layered with it? Just there's snare, two different iterations of it, with some like final noise on it. Um, so that's this first session like this, and then I'll show you what this looks like a little further down the road on it. Um, so I'll just go, yes, to this last one here of it. So this is where I'd kind of gone crazy with um, it. It sort of develops to that. I'd layered with that stair sound like a 808 style. And then some of these um, like little clicky sounds here did more sort of designing with them and tidying them up. So it's like this started as one of those clicks from the kitchen, but you can see that in terms of the programming of this, I, I, I ended up copying and pasting this um, in, in here. And uh, and just, just sort of doing that like in, in the sample editor for the most part. Um, yeah, I just did a fade out. So you can see here, like, like this envelope shape that's happening here. Like, I would have highlighted this. Basically, this is an eighth note that's happening between here and here, um, and just this would have all these would have all been the same volume because it's all exactly the same hit. So just fade out, um, and so that's where most of this enveloping is happening on this, and then and then just cutting this up also more, um, and then the real crazy ones that are happening here. So that's just these sounds processed a little bit more. So um, what's cool about the um, audio, like the Pro Tools system, was that you know there's effects like that verify, which is like a tape stop and tape speeding up. So taking sounds like this that are just like clicks that don't really have a pitch and having them like do a tape stop or it lowers in pitch, you get all kinds of weirdness, especially if they have any effects on it, like a reverb or. Um, so let's see if I probably have to unsolo this. Uh. Um, and so, and then what's happening there? Those like boing, springy sounds that are speeding up. It's a delay that's being modulated. Um, so the delay time is is increasing and slowing down. And what I do that in, and I actually, um, so there's uh, a wonderful plugin that's called. Um, it's by the sound guy called uh, SFX Machine. Um, it's basically like a modular. I don't know a modular effects unit. Um, and so I used to use this in OS9, and then. Uh, um, bought the upgrade again for um, OS 10, so I'll sh show you what that is, um, but, and I can show you actually the setting that I have. So okay, so here it is. Here I have it already on this track. So it's like this little thing. It, it kind of looks like a preset machine, but if you go to the preset editor, it's like a modular environment where you can 
set up a bunch of these different modules here and you choose a source and its process, so like ring mod, and then what's happening is the delay is being modulated. Um, and so like you can get these boingy sounds like uh, So if I play that same section again without that on there, it's just. So it's like an echo on it that's speeding up and slowing down because of an LFO. And it's also being ring modulated. And so um, and there's all kinds of great, there's good presets for it. You can customize them and make your own. And, and it's, but it's basically like this whole like little mini modular environment. Um, also, the developer of it's really nice like because um, um, I bought this OSX version of it and then I also wanted to use it in OS 9, like as uh, before there was a, any of like the effects types, there was Premiere effects, like Adobe Premiere, so you could use those in Logic. So they made, there's a version of this SFX machine that's like for Adobe Premiere. And so I, when I emailed the developer, he just like, uh, you know, um, he just sent it to me. He's like, you don't have to buy it. No one wants the Premiere version. So that was nice. Um, yeah. Is there some place that you go to find out about plugins? Is there a favorite site that you like to use? Um, no, I mean I think I think I troll the like normal like gear sluts and uh, what's like uh, Sonic. Well, Sonic Matter is the, the forum I look at for Logic a lot because that's like where all the Logic experts are. Um, but not really. I just do searches for I, and, you know like look for um, you know do search for like sp spectral. A unit like audio units or something spectral or FFT audio unit and and free <laughs> if if I can and uh, or and and just see see what's available because there's all kinds of people come up with stuff all the time and um, but what's interesting is a lot of the sort of neat sound design plugins I mean other than like SS SFX machine is a commercial one but a lot of a lot of the sort of tweaky experimental ones are freeware um, and sometimes they're not that user friendly or they they only c they're kind of like one trick pony effects like they do one thing and you know um, and it takes a long time to kind of sort through all those different plugins and figure out like oh this is this one's good for this thing and this is good for that um, so I don't know and then if people recommend stuff like that sort of thing yeah. is there a, when you sit in the studio when, when you go to work is there a certain amount of time you devote uh, you know for, any, for each time where you just I'm just gonna experiment I'm just gonna experiment and try stuff out and break stuff for you know two hours or four hours yeah I usually do it on whole separate days, even then from music stuff, because like it's it's hard to switch gears, and and I think to really like actually you know spending time to make new sounds, it's it's I can't even do it in a few hours. I don't think like to to make a you know more than just like a couple of sounds, like you know I sort of have to dedicate a day to it. And I don't do it as often anymore because like I don't have the time, and so um what but I, what I will do is just set aside you know like okay today like that. Like all those bass kits that I played you earlier, where I was like, I'm gonna, you know, I know this will be worth it. I'm gonna spend the entire day just with my emu, and get results that will last me a whole year, and then, you know, not mess with it for another year unless that, you know, time permits or, you know, I don't know, someone hired me to <laughs> do something with it. But um, so I, I, I try to, I, I'm not very good at, at switching gears between things. It takes me too long, so I try to separate things to different days. Um, but inevitably, you know, I don't know, time management is a challenge, and, I, and you know, I, I think that I'm still working on that as well, too. So, because sometimes I have to switch gears and work between things, and so, um, but I think uh, having, you know, reasonable time frames, like, like two hours to do something, and then, you know, because I guess also imposing the deadline helps get things done. But so far, it's been s dedicating days to things. Yes? I'm just curious, you work with BT, and he has some similar sounding glitchy things mm -hmm. sometimes. Just wondering if he has he uses similar methods to get those. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he does. Well, I mean, there's there's only so many different ways to to do things too in terms of like you know there's manual methods and there's automated. So it just depends which ones you use. So some of them I definitely learned from him in terms of like the manual method of doing things. And other ones were sort of you know like Cecilia was something that I sort of when I was working with him that I was exploring and then that ended up we ended up using that on things. So, it, so there's a kind of a crossover in terms of of that, um, you know, and then there's, you know, constantly exploring new, different w different things to do that. So, I mean, and certainly, you know, when you work with someone, it's like you, and especially someone like uh, BT, who's, you know, he's a very talented guy and, and um, has a lot of uh, interesting thoughts on things. So it's like I learned a ton from, from him. Um, 
and it was definitely an influence and you know um and then you know it's a it's also it's like you sort of simultaneously explore stuff you're like because you know you're both like okay let's you know what can we do to step up these like glitchy sounds and it's like you go on different searches for different things but you know some of it was um you know the the process of of figuring stuff out we figured out together you know and then some of it he just straight you know showed me and I've, i use because I, I like it you know and other stuff you know were things that i sort of figured out that he that he's incorporated as well so it sort of it, it worked like that um so um with this one let's see i think that's pretty much it in terms of these uh crazy crazy noises um and there's some other aspects in this too. Oh wow, that's a little insane. There's a sound of like that I made in a reactor that kind of sound. It reminded me of like a swing, like the metal of like a swing swinging back and forth. But it just was. <laughs> I don't know. It just sound. It's some spectral thing. I don't even remember what it was. But I just like that in the background. It's sort of. It's just sort of subtle in there that gives it um, a certain feeling. So. And tried exploring different patterns and stuff, but even though the in the song I don't think there's too many different um, beat patterns that happen. So um, let's see. Okay, now I have to go. Yes. Uh huh. Um, okay, so the number of hours, it's, it's way too many. I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's too long, uh, but, like, months uh, often. I think the shortest track that it ever, we ever did was Transgenic, and that was maybe two weeks, you know? Um, and in some ways, it's a much simpler track, but it's also one of our, my favorite, too. So there's something to be said for a quicker workflow. Um, but most of them were m literally months. Um, but uh, yeah, and then to know when it's done, it's basically like when you've you've listened to it, um, and it, you know, lots of times in different places, in different moods, like different frames of mind, and you know, and um, that you know that that's like the best you can do with it, like that you've like there's no little aspect that you feel like oh maybe I should adjust this, and you haven't tried it yet, and you know like it's as good as you can do it for that moment in time, which is. I mean, it's it's hard to evaluate what that point is, but basically, when you're really sick of it, <laughs> and uh, and and you know, there's nothing that you really know that you can change to make it better. But up until that point, when you know that it can be improved, like it's not done, you know. I mean, or at least I, it, it, for stuff that doesn't have a deadline or that's for artistic purposes, I don't think it should be done until you feel like that that's really like that's the best you can do, and that you listen to it and you're like, well, for what this is, I'm I'm happy with it. Um, and obviously, when you look back in retrospect at things, it's you're not always going to feel satisfied with things because you you've s since improved, and it's hard. It's always hard to look back and go, "Oh, wow, okay, my mix on this is bad," or or like these sounds are kind of cheese. Um, but you know, but that's that's the process of of growing. And there's other things you look back at, and then you're like, "Wow, that was really good," you know. Um, and so it's it's I think for for any uh, producer, and it's it's they probably experienced that of like some stuff you're like, yeah, this is good. And other stuff you're just, you listen back to where you're like, that used to, I used to think that was good and now I'm not so sure. So, um, let's see. Uh-huh. Um, not, not much. No. Um, like like for some reason people like sometimes to like you know like i mean it's they like to play your music when you're around like as like, like i mean like friends and stuff because it's just you know it's nice but sometimes like that if depending on what mood i'm in i'm kind of like oh god i don't want to hear that you know but then at the same time it's really nice if people you know connect with it and sometimes and when you have enough space from away from it so like emergence because we've you know we finished that like you know two years ago or it's like there's enough time away from it where I can listen to that now and not, you know, and not go just constantly be uh, hung up in the process where I can enjoy aspects of it. And there's other things I still sometimes think about that I'm like, well, I wish that was different. But you know, in general, it's like I feel like I've, I I can look back and, and listen to it, and it's it's an enjoyable experience. Um, but I feel like that I definitely needed space from that. So for 
like when it was done, I didn't want to hear it, you know, for a long time. And even when we got the uh, mastering and the the sort of reference mixes, I felt like I was too close to it to even, you know, properly judge like how those sounded. Even though I mean, I I had to, and because there's a couple tweaks that needed to happen. But um, yeah, it was that that's uh, it. It took a little time away from it to to, to be able to listen to it. Yes. Um, <coughs> you mentioned uh, like setting the keys on your controller to be chromatically correct earlier. Does that mean like oh. finding a scalar mode and then just making the white keys only play those? Notes? So on the controller, what I was talking about earlier was just um, so the keys are all. I mean, I'm, I'm not doing anything to like uh, just so in the programming of a sample instrument, um, the notes aren't necessarily chromatic. Like I'll just. Um, so like a C, I might not map something that's a C to a C, or I might map a whole chord to it. Just like sort of like how you'd um, map like drums or one shots that aren't related. Like it, where it does the ma the mapping doesn't matter in terms of the order. But what I'll do is sometimes is if it's if it's something that's like uh, melodic or harmonic, is make sure that it's related to everything else. So try to um, mess around with like in its pr in its uh, the patch layout, like the tuning of whatever zone that the sample's in. To adjust its its tuning so that it works key wise with everything else, um, so that basically, yeah, it doesn't really relate to what note I'm playing, but they all kind of work together and they're all in one key more or less, or related keys, yeah. Mm. So um, I'll show you this session here where with lies we start to bring in um, a different bass part here, um, synth bass part. So let's see. So this whole bit here. Um, and so this was started to change the feel of it, and I kind of liked it with you know that slower beat that I'd figured out in OS 9. Um, and this is where I st feel like it started to go in the direction that it ends up being, was, was, was when I figured out this bass part for just this portion. Like I didn't quite hit it on the mark with this session here. Um, This session's really boomy because this is before it was mixed or anything. And I had this whole hip hop snare idea here, that that definitely went away later. Uh, it's funny to hear that in here because like I'd forgotten about that. But you gotta you gotta try the ideas. It's like hip hop abs. Um, so that didn't end up going very far after this session. But the bass part was was cool. Um, so this this was actually from uh, an Oscar synth. It's like a British synth um, that I was had the fortune to borrow and multi sample. Um, so um, yeah, that's um, that's sort of like what's happening in this session. That's that's progress from from the previous. Um, um, and then I'll show you sort of one of the later ones here, like where it starts to actually come together. Again, part of this uh, doesn't exactly load because I don't have all the same plugins and things. Um, um, yeah, I, I have a virus polar, like virus TI polar, that I really like. Um, it's I think it's a really good sounding synth. Um, it's also <laughs> I don't really use it to its full extent. Like I, I, um, I think that it's capable of a lot more than what I use it for. Partly because it's I've gotten bogged down in its presets. It has way too many, and I started to create my own bank with it. But then I always get sidetracked, like with the literally thousands of presets that it has, because I have this compulsion to at least explore through all of them. I feel like before I can do anything with it, so. There's so many I've never got through them, so I actually mainly use the virus as a controller. Even though I really love its filter, I love its synthesis engine. You can do granular stuff with audio in it. It's just um, I, I haven't gotten around to taking full advantage of it. But that's that's one of those things that's on my to-do list because I think it's a wonderful sounding synth, and I love love the filters on it. And um, and it's I want to I want to put it you know take advantage of of because it's there. Um, but nowadays, what's I think is pretty amazing is especially for something like like if I was gonna, you know, I bought that several years ago. If I was gonna go buy something now, I wouldn't buy a virtual analog synth like that. Even though the virus is great, it's like things like uh, Native Instruments Massive, 
um, and some of the other software synths I think are on par with like a vi the virus in terms of sound quality for, you know, um, so if, if I'm buying a uh, synth, if I was going to do that, I'd get something that was, did something that software can't do, like an analog synth. Even though, I mean, analog synths are a pain in the ass. I have a SH-09 that I use for some stuff, but it's, it's monophonic. It doesn't stay in tune. It sounds great. The filter's amazing. You can input um, uh, an audio signal in through its filter, and it sounds beautiful. But when it comes down to it, uh, it's a real pain to use. <laughs> so that's why I'm mostly based in software. And occasionally I'll pull out the, to, the like, you know, the SH-09 or the, that EMU E6400 Ultra to, to do some sound design or create some sounds. But, um, yeah, the virus is, is, is pretty cool, but I think nowadays, like, software is kind of definitely caught up with that. Um, So this is sort of what the whole track looks like laid out. Um, um, so with the different elements in there, those guitars from the original, the new drums, um, and then the one thing that's sort of interesting in the in the middle in the background here. Um, let's see if this will play. Okay. Uh, by the way, that little fill there, that one that slows down, that was Cecilia. The drum part just ran through Cecilia and pulled out a little bit. Um. So there's these back, it's not this part. Um. Oh. I think I know what's happening here. I'm not hearing what I'm seeing, so. Oh, no, that's right. Um, let me take a look at my mixer here. There's a background part that I'd like to show you that's um, Amelia's vocals that are sort of stretched out and sound really nice. Um, it's bus five. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's muted. That's why. Okay. Um. I'm not sure why that bass part's playing. Let me uh, see if I can figure that out. Oh, it's because this is solo. There we go. Solo safe. So this vocal part here, this is Amelia's vocals, and it's just run, I have these busts to this reverb here. Um, and then to this auto filter, which is what's chopping that up, because it's an LFO that's on the filter here. Um, so this is just built into logic. Um, so uh, let me go back to that sound. I, just lost it there. Um, okay. So it's eighth notes is what is happening. So I could change this right here. And you can see this ramp down waveform shape. But again, this is, so this is sort of the vocal designing I did in this song was the background part. Just taking some of the notes that were held out and running them through this reverb and to, to play against. And I have the volume of that automated, so it swells up at certain moments when she finishes phrases. Um, and it, I think it sort of blends nicely with the rest of it to, to give it you know the mood that it has and everything. Um, so um, then let me move forward. Um, so that's. That's lies unless there's any more questions about it or vocal processing or anything. Um, and then what I'd like to do is talk about, uh, recently did a remix for Hybrid um, of uh, their song, Can You Hear Me? And I'll show you that for a little bit. And then um, we'll get Lawrence up here to talk about um, the business end of things as well. So um, yeah, I guess I'll move forward unless there's any, any more questions. Okay. Um, let's see if my computer can still handle all this. So, so first what I'll do is I'll play you um, Hybrid's version of Can You Hear Me? Because um, I, 
and, and I'll sort of show, because I took sort of a different route in terms of the approach. So, um, so the, but you can get, get an idea with what I was working with, and then I'll show you sort of what I did. And, um, so. <laughs> Um, you get the idea with what, so that that's what they uh, sent to me, and and so I was like, wow, that's really cool, and you know, um, like kind of was like, all right, I don't, you know, I can't really go in that direction because they do that already so well. So, um, but this is hold on, this is the email that it's like you always want to get that was nice. Um, so, uh, and it was like, it's like, hey, brain, so how are you? Thanks, uh, thanks for the licks to your glitchy online tutorial. Very good stuff indeed. Um, and then you know, asking if like the next three or four weeks would be available for remix, uh, and I was like, yes. So, um, and then in later correspondences, there, you know, I, because I, I asked them like, well, what sort of thing do you want? Um, and uh, you know, they were like, well, do your sort of like glitchy and baseline thing, and you know, when, which was cool because I was I felt um, well very excited. But then because Hybrid was one of my favorite groups, so you've listened to them for a long time, and so I was like, okay, this is this is great. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, well, I can't like. You know, it's hard to know when to how to approach a remix. Like, do you want to do something that's like similar, like in the genre of what they do, or do I just? And so they sort of reassured me of kind of just do what I do. Um, and then they mentioned that they would wanted to try something with like less vocals in it, because theirs has the female vocals and the male vocals, and it's all sort of throughout. Um, and so far, their remixes, and they've done some of their own remixes on things too. They'd mentioned that maybe to, you know, not have any vocals for the second half. So I'll show you sort of what I did uh, with that. Um,
So it took like kind of a different approach because I mean like I, I didn't want to step on what they're doing, that sort of thing. So more of like, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, explore some of the like, you know, just like bigger bass and um, I don't know, more of the like glitchy sounds. Yes. Yeah. Um, when, when an artist sends you something for a remix, mm -hmm. um, do you get the original arrange page with all of the tracks on it, even let's say regions that muted and didn't use? I mean, how much of their scratch work do you get? Right. I, I will show you that right now. So the question was how much of, of like hybrids track did I get or like, uh, um, so what they sent me was partial stems, um, which I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure what's typical. I know that some people will send you like full on stems of every, I mean, they won't use, they usually don't give you a session. It's usually just audio stems that you can drag into anything. Um, cause I think it'd be a lot to sort through maybe if, um, you know, um, and I guess it depends on the type of thing. I know that if it's people that do remixes of like classic songs, like for example, if, if someone got hired to remix like the cars or like, uh, something like that, then sometimes they will have, um, like, there'll be extra parts. Because um, I, when I, back when I was living in LA and working there, there was at one point for a, a commercial that we had the ability to look at um, the cars, just what I needed, stems for, <laughs> it was actually supposed to be, like, it, you know, if we could do a remix that was gonna be used for a Circuit City commercial, um, which didn't end up actually happening. But looking at those stems, there was some extra parts that were not, you know that were muted um, from the song. It was it was basically like unmixed stems of like basically of what they recorded and one extra track of like some stuff that would just was I mean it wasn't really useful stuff. But um, I think most of the time it's uh, you just get stems or in this case it was partial stems. So um, you know um, this is what they sent me uh, and so basically what it is is so there's the drum track. Um, That's not the drums, that's the bass. Drum track. <laughs> so it's just their intro drums, like this like comb filter drum part with like all these or resonators, whatever. So they sent me this, and then I, I was hoping they'd send me their main like breakbeat part, because the drums sound so nice in that, but they didn't. <laughs> so, uh, and which is fine, because like, you know, I, I, I you know, it's like I probably couldn't necessarily do anything better with it. So, I, you know, I kind of like being, you know, this reinforced the idea of going in a different direction. So, but then what they did send me also was, um, so then there's their bass track, uh, like their different synth bass parts. And I've always admired Hybrid for, I think they have wonderful bass sounds. And, um, so it kind of builds over the course of the track. Then, then here's their live bass part. And it's also, there's a synth player in there too. It's all mixed together though. So we're just listening to one stem right now. But definitely, I love that section. I, it's, I, I wasn't able to sort of integrate it into the, the direction I went with the remix, but I loved this sort of rocky section that they got into with that. Um, you know, the higher bass part. And then, of course, their strings, which are amazing. I guess it's the Prague Philharmonic. Um, and there's so many nice moments in this. I love the chords they have for this too. It's really, you know, really beautiful and lush. Um, so it's really, you know, it's it's cool source material to, to play around with. Uh, then they have their these are their like reactor drones. That you hear these in lots of hybrid songs. I always liked it. Well, they're and and I can probably guess from this title that the other reactor ensemble they use is space drones because that's a reactor ensemble that. It's really nice to make these, you can make these kind of sounds with it too. But it's always so tasteful. That's what I, I, I appreciate about hybrid. Like they, they always put things in a, together in a very tasteful way. Um, and then I've got their track of arpeggio. 
since there's another one here too. This one. Um, and then I've got the different vocal tracks here. So here's Charlotte's vocals. And, and I really liked the, some of her vocals at the end of, no need to like, hold on, uh, is it here? Oh, this part here. And so this is the part that I sort of explored, was taking some of these and going off this idea. Because I couldn't really get this kind of really dense part to work in what I was interested in going for. I really like it, but it just, it didn't. It, it was hard to fit outside of like its original context, I think. Um, and then this is, uh, I guess, some falsetto vocals. Oh yeah, these are the high background parts that are really like, angelic vocals, which are nice. Um, and then there's the guy vocal. This is Tim Hutton, who's their, I believe, is their live bass player and is uh, tours with them and whatnot. So he's singing on this track. I got something to say. Can you hear me now? He's Can you hear me now? Definitely British. I'm awake today. I got something to say. Can you hear me now? So it's more like the edgy rock vocals. No need to obey. And so that's that's all I had to work with was was this here, um, which is which is plenty. Um, and and I, the only thing I was hoping for was their main drums, just because I wanted to take a look at them. Yes. Um, yeah, well, I felt definitely pressure. At first, before they indicated that they didn't want lots of vocals, I felt a lot of pressure to make all the vocals work. And that was challenging, because there's so much vocals in it. And there's different vocals. There's female, there's male, there's a lot of different parts. Um, so it was like complicated to make that work in a new way, because um, usually with a remix you either have to kind of strip things down. I mean, even though the remix is really busy now listening to it again, but in some ways it's stripped down. Like a lot of the parts are stripped out, um, and uh, so, um, well, sorry, this loud. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, you know it was hard to make all the vocals work. So I did feel some pressure from that. But then when you know I sent them my first draft of it. Um, and they're like, oh, you don't have to use all these vocals in here because I think they could tell maybe it was a little bit forced. And they're like suggested, like you know, don't have any vocals come until halfway. And I was like, okay, well, that's that I can do. Uh, I just didn't want to like offend them and be like, oh, like that they'd think that oh, I don't like the vocals or something, and you know, didn't want them in there or something like that. So, um, but yeah, the rest of the stems, I mean, I really didn't, u I didn't use much from it. I used the vocals, I used the strings, um, and that was it. Uh, I didn't end up using any of the rest of it. Um, so it was kind of nice because I got to sort of build a track. Um, so I'll, And I'll show you a little bit of that, like uh, can kind of peek through that process. Um, <laughs> 